right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by James Newell, who is in just outside London, correct, James? Indeed, yes. Not too far from Windsor. Yeah, not too far from Windsor. You know, that's uh, one of the residents of the royal family, obviously. And uh, and uh, it's your evening time there, uh, but uh, how's your autumn autumn started already? Yeah, it's cold and it's wet, so yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Although I'm originally I'm originally from Ireland, and that could describe our summers too. So you know. yeah, that's true. No, 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 it's not true because in the summer you get warm rain. That's how you tell the difference. That's exactly soft, <laughs> soft rain. That's what we like to call soft, it. Soft, warm rain, comforting yeah, exactly. rain. <laughs> so uh, James is the author of the book Clear Sales Message, which is also the name of his company. So, uh, so here's the thing, James. Right, companies spend a lot of time you know, marketing and all of that, getting the message right, getting the value proposition and all of that. But then it's you, you rely on your salespeople to actually carry that message forward. And your salespeople are the tip of the spear, right? They're the first real interface with prospects. And, and that. so oftentimes salespeople are a little bit disconnected from the original messages and they kind of make up their own. So depending on who you're interacting with as a, as a prospect or interacting with the company for the first time, you may be getting very different messages, right, from salespeople? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and this is essentially where the business came about. So it started by working with smaller businesses um, and really understanding that not only do people not know what a value proposition actually is, um, they can't answer the most basic questions in business. Things like, what do you do? Why should I choose you? How does it work? Why is it expensive? And so on and so on. Really basic questions. We tend to shoot from the hip each time and leave ourselves a chance in, in that regard. And a lot of the corporates that I work with say, look, I'll ask you a question. I'll call your office and ask them a question. Do you think I'll get the same answer or a different answer? And you nearly always get sort of a knowing smile. Yep, exactly. So we understand the importance of branding, the same logos, fonts, and colors, and we invest in that heavily. And we understand the importance of that. You wouldn't have 25 different types of business card, right? We understand the importance of investing in that. And yet when it comes to sales conversation, most companies, and really big companies too, literally the people that you're speaking to are just saying what they feel like. And it depends on the time of day and whether they've eaten, been to the toilet, going on holiday, all these kind of crazy factors. There's no systematization of how they speak. They don't have a clear sales message, and thus they're just chanting each conversation, which is crazy when you think about it. Yeah. So, wh- why is it? Where is the breakdown? Because, like you said, uh, I mean, they, your company spend a lot of time on the messaging and all of that, and and as you say, um, people wouldn't, you know, create their own business cards or they wouldn't create their own logo or they. So everybody adheres to a certain amount of rules, but not when it comes to the message. So, where is where is the breakdown happening? The the breakdown in the communication, I guess, Mm -hmm. definitely with larger companies, is that there might be a belief in sales training and the the techniques and, you know, this is how we talk to people, this is how we persuade people, et cetera, et cetera, but nothing really too product-centric. Or if it is, people tend to put their own spin on it, and it can just organically change over time, sort of Chinese whispers. There seems to be a disconnection between the value of a congruent and clear branding strategy, everything must be the same, and with sales messaging, even if it is in place, people just tend to put their own spin on it and it just seems to be allowed to happen. Whereas if you kind of modified logos and things like that, you'd be spotted pretty quickly. But in conversation, you modify things and you're not spotted so quickly. And the reality is that, uh, and I think this is this is uh, an important point, and the reality is that the best performing sales organizations are very clear in, in their messaging. They're very clear in their processes. They follow a process. They're very well connected uh, with the overall message of the company. So it's not like we're looking to take away the freedom of sales to be creative and you know and how they sell. We're just saying that if you stay on message, it's going to you're you're going to do better. Yeah, absolutely. And and for a lot of people, I mean, depending on the experience of the person in a sales position. Confidence is a huge factor when it comes to selling, knowing what to say and how to say and when to say. So having some kind of architecture to the conversation, so this is how we work, these are the questions I need to ask you, et cetera, et cetera. Just having those sort of bookends in that shape can allow people to do their best work. And it's not about sending people into robots. It's just giving them Mm -hmm. a process to follow that they know that if they do follow it, it will work and they can put their personality into it, but they've got to follow the fundamental points of of the message itself. 
Yeah, because there's a con there's a concept uh, in in politics, right? In in people who work with you know polit PR companies who work with politicians and and uh, train them, and that's the idea of islands, right? You know, you're 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 on your island, and that's your message. And people try to get you off the island onto other islands, but you always come mm -hmm. back and try and stay on your island. And I think to some degree, it, it, there's a there's a correlation there with with sales because you have to kind of stay on message because sometimes people will try and take you in all sorts of directions, and it's very tempting to go there as opposed to yeah. kind of stick to to your message and your real value proposition. Yeah. So if you don't have the awareness of the importance of it, which I think is the main issue and also the architecture itself. So if a smaller business, they literally will not have any kind of real preparation for their messaging. Mm -hmm. But in larger businesses, even though they have it, like you say, it's quite easy to be dragged to another island because you don't really give it the same value that you would if somebody said, right, we're going to change your logo, or change a visual aspect of your branding. You'd very much spot that straight away, right? Mm -hmm. So how much of this, uh, how much of this falls on the shoulders of management in terms of like sales management, marketing management about really getting alignment and making sure that that, you know, messaging is clear and it's flowing all the way through the organization? I would say that's where it starts so with commercial directors, company owners, sales leaders, because if you want people to promote your products and bring your offering to the marketplace, you need to give them the tools to do it. And it needs to be the same no matter how many people you've got. So I, I think the predominant um, burden is on those guys to start the process and then for it to become part of the culture that this is how we talk about the company, this is how we talk about the offering. Yes, you can put your personality into it, but you need to make these very, very distinct points about our offering because this is what works and this has been tested and proven and, and this is why we use it. And you so have um, kind of like 80, 20. Sorry. Yeah. And you have outlined like um, some questions, and and I love the first one is the you know what do you do, because it seems yeah. like you know that's that seems like a, such a simple and obvious question. But how often have you seen people, uh, you know, kind of stopped in their tracks when somebody asks them, you know, what do you do? What does your company do? And suddenly they're you would think it would be immediately they'd be able to tell you exactly what it is, but they start to waffle a bit. Yeah. And again, that's because they're not prepared. So they often say the, the different things each time. Most people don't like the what do you do question, even though when you meet somebody for the first time, even not in a professional setting, it's generally what we ask is how we're trying to peg mm -hmm. people and understand them. Something to listen out for the next time you ask it or are asked it, we generally say what we are. So somebody says, what do you do? And you say, I'm a photographer, I'm a this, I'm a that. We say what we are, not what we actually do. So mm -hmm. even at that first, uh, connection with uh, so conversation with disconnecting with people because we're just not ready for it and so from experience I found that when you ask me what they do they're either too short and they say well, I'm a photographer it's too long-winded and jargonistic and you find yourself saying oh so so you do x y z that yes that's what I do <laughs> or it's in the mid <laughs> or it's in the middle and sometimes they throw in a bit of jargon unknowingly and they can confuse you and I think also sometimes it's uh, as you say people don't like that question so their delivery, uh, you know, kind of shows that in some ways. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, if somebody you want somebody to be excited and, and enthusiastic and sound like they really believe in what they do or their product, their service, their company. So if your if your first initial answer to that question is kind of reticent and stuff, it, it puts a lot of doubt in the mind of the person asking. Right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I always maintain it's the three things that you're looking for when you when you're going to buy from somebody: confidence certainty and expertise most people are expert at what they do by definition or at least they should be most mm -hmm. people are certain they can get the result that they claim to get for you but most people don't actually communicate confidently and this is a problem so if at my first meeting with you I ask you what you do and you struggle to articulate that or as you say you seem reticent i judge your entire ability to meet my needs and your ability to communicate your ability to meet mm -hmm. my needs so the, a lot of the work that I do, and it always makes you laugh when I say this, I make my clients sound like they know what they're talking about. So they actually they know what they're doing. Of course, they're doing the highly skilled people. But being able to actually communicate that effectively and correctly is quite difficult. And the what do you do question is not going away. It's the first question we get asked. It's very, very important. So if you don't like it, you need to find a way to answer it because it's going to keep happening. Yeah, and and I agree with you because 
when when a salesperson engages with me is like I I want them to be an expert. I want them to be confident. I want to feel like okay, here's somebody who who knows what they're talking about, who is understands you know the issues I have or whatever I'm trying to do. And I don't care whether that is somebody coming to do some work on the house or whether it's a a huge uh, you know enterprise salesperson. It doesn't matter to me. I just want I want that as you say. I want to feel confident in them. Yeah, and it's due to something called emotional resonance, as emotional contagion. So it's that classic mm-hmm. thing: you go into a room full of happy people, you feel happier. Sad people, you feel sadder. So we'll have our conversation. I won't feel too confident in you. I kind of resonate that you're not really that confident about what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Thus, I won't buy from you. So we have this all the time when things don't feel right, and that's what we're talking about. We're picking up on these kind of emotional signals, and a lot of sales really is the touchy feely, softer energy resonance side of things i'm not too much of a hippie but there's a lot of that stuff <laughs> going on <laughs> and you know it because you feel it so if you lie to me right now i would feel it i wouldn't say i know that you've lied to me but i go i can't believe you lied to me because we, we yeah. feel it and we understand we understand what's going on and so as, as a salesperson you, you lose clients you never really know why and oftentimes it can be because they're picking up on your lack of preparation and your lack of confidence and like say your reticence when you ask them what they do and you, you kind of feel bad to well this is what I do. And it's like, it's, it, it's a troublesome question for them. And actually, they should be excited. And they should say, well, let me say what I can do. Blah, 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 and they can really get into it for you. Yeah. And I, and I think, and obviously, I mean, you get, you get one chance to create a first impression, obviously, and therefore, you know, how you, so, I mean, because sometimes like you'll find somebody that come out of the gate, they'll be very engaging when they're saying, hey, hey James, so where are you? Oh, you're in London. Oh, that's great. And they do all of that. And then when the, the conversation transitions to the business part, it starts to wane right because again because (laughs) the the preparation hasn't been done so that should be as it should be as engaging as the small talk right yeah 100 percent. and we always there's also a classic mistake in business the features and benefits right so we tend to Mm -hmm. talk about the features first rather than the benefits an analogy that i use when i'm training my clients particularly in London, is when you see adverts for airlines on the buses around London, the tubes, mm-hmm. et cetera, you very rarely see a plane or a plane seat in those adverts. You'll see a beach, you'll see people having dinner, you'll see a couple, et cetera, et cetera. The airlines understand intrinsically that you need to sell the destination, yeah. mm-hmm. not the journey. So you change the syntax, the order of what you're talking about. So we're naturally inclined to talk about ourselves, first of all, as human beings, which is absolutely fine. If we take a group photo, if you look at a school photo, the first person you look for is yourself absolutely fine but in conversation Mm -hmm. you need to be talking about the other person asking them great questions getting excited about what you can do for them not immediately getting into the details about this is the plane seat etc etc but i think a lot a bit of that lack of passion lack of excitement comes from just focusing on the wrong thing so the person's not getting excited because you're not talking about what they want to hear about and the energy of the whole conversation is kind of waning from the get-go yeah, and I think that's a great analogy, the the airline one, because yeah, because you want to get excited about the destination, you want to get excited about yeah. that. Now, that doesn't mean that the that the person you're talking to, the prospect or whatever, doesn't understand that it's not magic. Like there is, there are steps to getting there, but they want to feel. Everybody wants to feel excited about the destination before they actually sit back and say, "Okay, now let's talk about the steps to get there." Because you're right. If I started off to you said said, okay, so you want a beach holiday. Well, first you're going to have to book, then you're going to have to pack your clothes, then you're going to have to get an Uber or taxi to the airport, then you're going to have to wait. I mean, when you go, if you start off like that, you'd be like, oh, I don't even want to go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So you've got to make a nice, strong connection at the start to what they actually really want. Mm-hmm. And and if you think about it, if you go meta for a second, what I, what I want as the buyer isn't really even that holiday. It's the feeling of relaxation mm-hmm. or the connectedness with my family, et cetera. So if you can really think about those kind of elements and talk to me in those kind of terms, if that's when you connect me, you engage me, then you can tell me about the Uber. We'll talk about that afterwards because mm-hmm. you're riding on the excitement and the energy you've already built up from that. If you lead with Uber and insurance and the boring <laughs> stuff, yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Ex- exactly, problem. exactly, and that translates into anything because at the end of the day, if I'm a if I'm a customer and I have a I have a business issue that I need solving, there's a or or an opportunity. I mean, there is an outcome that I'm looking for. There's some reason why I want to talk to you in the first place, and that's what yeah. you got to get you got to be clear on and get excited around, isn't it? Is finding out what that outcome, what that result is, I'm looking for. 
Yeah, and, and you're, you're going to be doing one of four things. You're moving away from a negative situation or a negative mm-hmm. feeling and the situ- or an emotion, and the feeling is just a manifestation of that, and or you're moving towards the positive element of that. So once we can identify that, with the messaging work I do with a lot of my clients, we theme their emails, their conversations, etc. So the theme might be pride or peace of mind or safety. So rather than give them the specific terms they need to use, they know that when we're talking to this type of customer, the theme is peace of mind. So we'll shape our conversation towards that because we know that's what's going to resonate because that's what they're really buying, so to speak. Yeah, and and I think that's uh, it's great. So, so part of what you're what you do and what you advise people obviously is you need to have a clear message, but you also need to have a subset of messages that are targeted and tailored towards the right type of of customer, right? Yeah, so, you, so it's not about having a one size fits all approach, but certainly, I mean, my avatar, my my sort of test case essentially is anybody that walks past through the street, as long as they're an adult and as long as they can speak English, what do you say to them to explain your offering and to get them engaged? Human beings have got an eight second attention span. In the UK, we've got the average reading age of a nine year old, and that's an average. So there's some people above and below that, which is just frightening. And we walk around all day long thinking about ourselves and what we want. So when we come across a salesperson who fills us with loads of jargon, talks about themselves first. It's just this complete mismatch. So you need to understand the different types of buyer that you've got and then be ready for those really obvious questions. What do you do? How does it work? Why should I choose you? And then get into objection handling, you know, why is it expensive, et cetera, et cetera. They're really, really basic things, but most companies do not take the time to actually prepare for them. And thus they leave a lot of their sales to chance, I think. Yeah, and by the way, frighteningly, I read a, an article about a year, maybe it's a couple of years back now, that actually said that our attention span had gone below that of a goldfish. So, <laughs> well, well, I've heard that, and it's and it's funny. I always make this joke when I'm when I'm teaching clients because the goldfish is the gold standard in attention span. But how do they measure it? Is is he reading a yeah. book, and then the second yeah. he looks up, they stop the clock? I don't know how they. Yeah, do it. I, I have no idea how they've ever med- mentioned or measured that. But I mean, I also think is that if that is the case, then we have definitely crossed over into de-evolution, de-evolu- de- I think, and we're definitely yeah. going backwards <laughs> yeah, at it. this stage. <laughs> <laughs> we're essentially doomed. <laughs> well, we are. I mean, if you if you think about it, I mean, we're using emojis. I mean, that's what like cavemen were using, right? So they were using emojis. We're back to using emojis. We can't even be bothered um, writing sentences anymore. But, uh, but, but it, it's a great analogy for communication, though, because yeah. it, it, it resonates the path of least resistance. So what's the simplest, most effective, easiest way to get our message across or to achieve our goals? And if you focus on that with your messaging or with your general sales approach, that's where you're going to find your wins. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, joking aside, it is it is painting that picture, right? And painting that picture as simple yeah, uh, as quickly as you can, quite literally, to say here is... I, I get. I hear what you're saying. Here is how I can help you. Here's the destination we can get to together. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, so just tell me quickly uh, before we finish up, uh, just some examples. You have to name companies. Just some examples of where you have seen this really transform a company when they got their messaging clear and right. Well, there's there's one example in particular, and, and I can name check them. It's absolutely fine. It's okay. a company that I work with in, in in the UK. So they were a transportation and taxi company. They had a new offering, which is essentially a um, a, a series of WABs, wheelchair accessible vehicles. So mm-hmm. I helped them to position to position the offering so it sits in between a taxi and an ambulance. So you wouldn't need. So it's not for people that need an uh, ambulance transport where you really have that healthcare need. But it's also not for people where a taxi is good enough. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle. They needed a name. They needed an articulation. And, and the main win for them was the name. So the name of their offering is Medicab, M-E-D-I-C-A-B, Medicab, a medical taxi, essentially. Mm-hmm. So if you're able-bodied, you get a mini cab. If you need healthcare assistance, you get a Medicab. Oh, so nice. from that one name, which they've been able to trademark, so now they have intellectual property to that, from that one name, you can guess what you think it is, be absolutely right, or at least in the ballpark. And for the want of being able to actually articulate their offering, so they had the idea for this service, but they couldn't articulate and get it out there, which is the classic problem that a lot of my clients face. They've gone from two vehicles to something like 34 vehicles in about seven months because they've been able to win contracts and they've been able to upscale the business just for the want of articulating the actual offering. And this happens time and time again. There's lots of great companies out there with great ideas, but communicating those ideas is the real catalyst that drives everything forward. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a that's a great uh, example because I know actually from experience with my mother-in-law and actually my own mother now is how 
there is that there is that gap between you know when you need to transport somebody to a doctor who's immobile you end up getting an ambulance well you don't really need an ambulance but yeah. you can't take them in a regular taxi either so yeah i like yeah. it it's, it's, yeah it's, it's so they spotted the they spotted the gap in the market, but for the want of being able to articulate mm-hmm. it, and particularly the name Medicab, and there's a real power in naming things and having an appropriate mm-hmm. name for something, and particularly to the point where somebody could guess it. So you could try that name on somebody that you, that you know that's never heard this conversation, and they should be able to guess at what that service is from one word, two syllables, and about seven letters, whatever. That's the power of it. Absolutely great. And uh, your company name, Clear Sales Message, it does what it says on the tin. <laughs> and <laughs> they don't they don't always get that in the US, but we always grew up on that. <laughs> we grew up on that uh, that ad. I can't remember what was it, Ron Sailor? It, it was Ron Sailor. I thought you were gonna say we grew up on Ron Sailor because so we don't even yeah, yeah, well that, that's another story, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Listen, before you go, James, uh, can you tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you and your offerings? Yeah, sure. The most important place to go is to clearsalesmessage.com. That's where you can see my books, courses, and, and free resources. And one of the most important things that I'm doing at the moment is a little bit to the side of messaging. And it's an online training course for people that fear, hate, or avoid selling. And it's called Selling Confidence. So it helps you define, engage, close, follow up clients, and deal with the mindset side of selling. A lot of the online training programs that teach you how to sell focus mm-hmm. on the kind of alpha male, the aggressive, Grant Cardone-esque kind of way, yes. which has its place, but for a lot of people, they just want that little confidence boost. So sellingconfidence.com is an online resource for exactly that. Excellent. Uh, you're right. I mean, I think, uh, and I think particularly nowadays, because there's so many different ways of engaging that there is much more room for a whole variety of, of sales personalities. So great. I think Absolutely. that's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, listen, James Ewell, thank you very much. Uh, fascinating uh, conversation. The book, again, is Clear Sales Message. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.